G'day folks and welcome to an on-chain update for the 3rd of April. Now today we're looking at a pretty cool set of metrics and actually these are some of the original tools very very early in the Checkmate career was when these actually were developed. Um, we're looking at the MVRV gradient oscillators. They've gone through a few different names. They used to be the market realized gradient oscillator and there's just a whole lot of words there. So at the moment I'm just calling them the MVRV gradient oscillators and the components are all in there. MVRV we're referring to price which is the market value. We're referring to the realized price which is the RV component. Gradient, because what we're looking at is how vertical those two components are relative to each other. And oscillators, because they go through a bit of a, you know, some statistical meanings and eventually they oscillate around a value of zero. So hence the MVRV gradient oscillators, we will touch on this in more detail. So what are these tools and why did I create them? My logic was that if we look at a parabola and we use the 2017 bull market, which you can actually see up here in the top, with this 2017 bull market, it got increasingly vertical. Now, what you can also see is the realized price here in orange also started to get increasingly vertical. So the argument is if we just measure how vertical the price is over a 30 day or a 60 day or a 90 day period or a yearly period, if we measure how vertical price is getting, we would be able to model out that parabola. But the logic is that if you were to model that, you'd probably get to a point you go, God, this is getting too vertical. Maybe at one of these local corrections, you go, well, it's too vertical, it's over. Because if it goes too vertical, generally speaking, that's the end. But you also have the realize cap, which is true real organic inflows, capital inflows into the asset. And we'll talk about this more later, but this is my thesis. We've got these capital inflows, which kind of support that verticality. But at some point in time, there isn't enough capital inflows. So maybe rather than measuring how vertical price is to the zero bound, let's measure it relative to the realized price. Now, again, we'll talk about this more detail. So a lot of this is understanding what are the fundamentals of these tools? What do we actually mean when we say vertical? And the question is really vertical relative to what? And lastly, we're going to use these to actually assess market momentum where we currently are. So we're currently correcting. I'll just check my block clock right now. Net right now, sixty-six thousand three hundred. So we are down a little bit from the uh, from the peak. Um, not too far from where we recorded the video uh, the other day. Um, so nevertheless, um, let's have a look at and, and understand the fundamentals of what these tools are and how we can use them to assess momentum. Just before we get started, this is a brand new channel. So if you do get the opportunity to do a like, a share, and a subscribe, it really would help this channel get to more people. If you've got any questions at all, you can always reach me in the comment section below. But any way that you can you know, tweet about it or just let people know this channel exists would, uh, would really be a big help. So uh, without further ado, let's get stuck straight into the analysis. Okay, so here we are in Check on Chain, and we're going to be looking under the profit and loss section here, and specifically at the MVRV grading oscillators. The astute may notice there is actually an AVIV version. Um, technically, I would argue these are probably a little bit better, but let's just stick with the basics here. Let's not uh, confuse things. We'll come back to this at a later episode. Now, you'll also note which button do I choose? There's a 30 day, a 90 day, a 360 day, and all, which one do I pick? Well, just to make it really easy, I'm gonna pick all of them and we'll go through them one at a time. Now, when we talk about the time period, let's start with the biggest one. As with many types of analysis, the bigger your time period, the long, you know, the 200 day moving average is a slow moving lumbering beast. When it triggers a signal, it's probably got a bit more weight to it. On the other hand, when your seven day moving average triggers something, it's gonna happen all the time. There's a lot of noise. It's definitely gonna respond pretty quickly, but it's probably not gonna be, you know, I mean, if you're getting in and out when the seven days are something, you're probably gonna be get chopped up quite a bit. So trying to find the balance between long-term, using that to set your longer term bias and short-term to really understand kind of what's happening on the edge, that's what we're really gonna be using these for. So let's start big picture, fundamentals looking at the 360 day. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually turn off the uh, the delta gradient and the realized gradient. We're just looking at, actually I'll turn off the realized price. Oh, I'll leave realized price on, we'll probably need that. So what is this tool doing? Simply put, the higher that the indicator is, here we're just looking at the market, so the spot price, the higher that this particular metric is, if we're looking at this point here on the 22nd of February, 2021, that means that the price delta between the 22nd of February, 2021, and one year earlier in 2020, which is actually back here somewhere, is quite steep. Over a one year period, the gradient from February to February is this level, 
right? There's statistics all baked into this, so it's not a price difference. It's, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff there, but for simply put, it is, this is telling you over a 360 day period, the market is substantially higher in terms of price. Now, what we can also see is that the realized price went through a bit of a repricing there too. Not quite to the same extent, price went substantially higher. So let's bring in the realized gradient. It was also much higher, but not by a huge margin. So now is when we actually introduce the difference between these two, and this is the delta gradient. Now, the delta gradient is actually the signal that you're looking for. So the rest of it is just A, for some pretty colors, but B, it kind of helps you understand what both of those components are doing. People who are more in the engineering weeds want to understand what each of the components is doing. But the delta gradient is subtracting the market from the realized. Now, the signal from this, the more vertical these go, let's go to 2017 bull market. The more vertical these peaks, the more oomph, the more energy the market has, the more momentum the market has as we head higher. Technically speaking, higher highs is a good thing. It's what you actually want to see. When we started getting lower highs here, much the same way as MVRV back in 2021, this was signaling that even though price was heading higher, we had a weakening of the overall momentum and an even lower momentum across the two all-time highs from November and April. Positive numbers tell you that the market across both of these is trending higher. But negative crossovers, when the delta gradient slices down through zero, which you can see actually happened in late December or mid December 2021, this is telling you that things aren't okay. We are now in a negative momentum. Price is moving against the gradient of the realized price. That means that people are still taking profits, but the market is heading lower. So overall, a negative crossover is no bueno. A crossover to the positive side is, again, it's telling you the market is starting to recover. Now, quite often, you'll get these long-term big divergences as well. It's basically telling you that even though the market was trading sideways at this bottom, note this big macro divergence. It's telling you that actually, even though the price is trading kind of sideways, it's getting more and more vertical and it's starting to push higher. And this thing actually triggered in May, telling you that, hey, this thing, this bear market may actually be done. And March 2020 didn't actually have that much of a dip relative to the bear uh, cycle low. Now, again, the 360 day is very, very slow. This is not going to tell you when things happen first. In fact, it tells you about the middle of the bear. Hey, mate, it's probably a bear market. Now, it can be responsive, but it's a nice way to just ground yourself and say, well, price is doing all sorts of funky stuff up here. It's all positive. Yes, it's weakening, but it's all positive. When it flips over, you go, well, I really should probably put my bear, my bull market bias in a box for a minute and just put some bear goggles on for a second. This thing here is really to help orient you very, very big picture. Now, of course, if we go down to the 180 day, that's literally 50% of the, uh, the previous period, aka it's gonna be twice as fast you can actually see that in our current market cycle, we have acceleration. We actually have higher and higher peaks. And actually, this is true across all of our longer term um, periods. We have higher and higher peaks, and this is telling us we have positive momentum. This uptrend has been extremely robust since 2023 and even 2022, when FTX blew up, this uptrend has been extremely robust, and we can actually see it in the overall momentum. Now, just to kind of flag how this thing works, Let's look at the bottom that started forming from June. This is when three hours capital blew up. And here's when FTX blew up. In fact, let's use our zoom function here and go cycle four. Here's three arrows. Here's FTX. Note this beautiful bullish divergence. This is telling us that even though the market is trading lower, the energy of each down cycle is getting less and less and less. And we've got a nice little crossover here in January telling us, you know what, we're actually back into positive territory. Now, this is on 180 day, right? The smaller time periods would have flagged this much, much sooner, but it really gives you a bit of a view. Same as after March 2020, around May, we'd done the recovery from March 2020. We're saying, you know what, we're actually into positive territory. So it can really be not quite a useful tool to help understand momentum in markets, and particularly when these gradients and these divergences, this is a bearish divergence, we're making higher highs, but there's less oomph, there's less energy, there's less momentum with each one. Right, if we jump down to the 90 day, and what I'll do, I'll stick this onto our modern era, which is pretty much in 2015 onwards, kind of get rid of all the prehistory, doesn't really matter that much. You can see that rather than getting out in May, this thing here is starting to tell you in February that things aren't quite right. And you can actually see how stellar this peak is, how insane these rallies are. And when it starts to decay, 
that's usually telling you, and it does so quite violently to the downside, things aren't quite right. But you can also see this beautiful higher and higher and higher highs, right? This is a beautiful parabola. Um, I don't know if we'll ever see a parabola like 2017 again. I, if there's one regret in my life, it's that I only got in at the top of 2017. I never got to actually ride this thing because, man, what a textbook upcycle that really was. Nevertheless, if we look at where we currently are, I mean, you can't be too mad at the upcycle we have right now. Now, let me just zoom in on the current cycle. You can see that our current correction, let's call it a correction or a consolidation. I would call it a consolidation thus far because we're kind of range trading in this zone. We've got a little bit of weakness on the smaller time frame, right? Now, remember, this thing here, it's still in positive territory. It's telling us that over a 90-day period, the price is continuing to trend higher. So thus far, there's not that many warning signals. But if we really were to zoom in, you say, well, at the very least, over the next couple of weeks, days, maybe months, things are looking on a 90-day period like they might chop around a little bit. We might even get a correction. We could just bounce around. But it's telling you that the current upcycle in the short term doesn't really have the momentum that it had, certainly not you know, uh, back here in early, in early March. So over a 90-day period, that's another way to think about this. Whatever the indicator that you're getting from this particular metric, if we get a crossover, it's usually telling you you've probably got something in the order of about 90 days. If we go from negative to positive, you've probably got about 90 days of strength, right? And this crossed over in January and it started to weaken towards, yeah, well, May, but really you could say April, right? There's three months. So it's telling you you've got about three months of gas in the tank before you can probably start looking at that things cooling down. Again, helping understand momentum. Now let's really zoom in. We'll start on cycle four here on the 30 day. Now, as I mentioned before, with a faster indicator, you are going to get a hell of a lot more chop and noise. Nevertheless, it's going to be the first thing to respond. And we've actually had a negative crossover on the 30 day. So what this is telling you is that in the very, very short term over the next 30 days, expect some chop, expect some downside, expect some volatility. The market is actually telling us that when we've got this negative vertical momentum, we've still got profit taking taking place because the realized price is still climbing, but we actually have a bit of a down leg in terms of price. So we've seen this, in fact, the peak was here in March. You could probably argue this was a lower high in late March. Um, here we are in the 3rd of April and we've got even further downside. So it's kind of telling you that momentum, at least in the short term, is really coming out of the sales, right? So that doesn't mean that the bull cycle is over. It may be, we don't know, but it does, it's not telling us if the 30-day rolls into the 90-day and the 90-day rolls into the 180-day and you can kind of see how this thing cascades and gets worse and worse and worse, then you start thinking about, well, maybe this isn't quite the healthiest bull cycle that we've seen. But generally speaking, you'll get these, you know, the mar markets generally like to convince people that the bear is back and then go, oh, wow, it's not. And it explodes higher. And then everyone gets excited. And eventually too many people get excited. And that's what creates these massive down draws um, and moves into a bear cycle. Now, of course, we'll save the best till last because many people go, oh, okay, there's too many indicators, too many periods. Don't understand it. Don't get it. And that's perfectly fine. The next step is to go, well, okay, how can we simplify this down into something? Just just tell me, is it generally okay? Is it generally not okay, right? Give me, give me a bit of a red green. And that's essentially what we've got here. Here, we've only pulled in the delta gradients for the 360, 180, 90, and 30. And the framework here is just looking at, well, how many of those are in positive territory? How many of them are staying across negative? And you can see that here's our 30 day crossing negative, the rest of them remain positive, And only in the last short period of time, have we seen a bit of a pullback, right? Now, this is not something I would do anything about. Personally, when I look at this, okay, you know, it chops around all the time, right? It does this on a regular basis. It's when we really start to get a, a quite meaningful decay. This is when you start to go, okay, at least a downtrend is something you're going to pay attention to. A red crossover is something you go, I'm going to take this a little bit more seriously, right? Let's look at it in terms of the modern era. And again, this metric is not designed to be the most precise. People can actually take this methodology and make it more precise. But the idea here is just to help understand where are we in the grand scheme of things. And you can see that within all these corrections and all this noise and all this chop and all this chaos in 2017, this thing basically said, just sit tight, do nothing. Once we actually got into February and this thing goes blow off the off the top, it's now starting to say, all right, this is a sharp decay and this is not a normal correction. We're now into red territory. So it helps you just frame up and understand what does the trend look like? What's our aggregate momentum? And right now, the aggregate momentum, 
in the short term on the 30 day, yeah, we've got a bit of a correction. We get corrections all the time on the 30 day. So is it something that you should be concerned about personally? Not really. But when we look at it from a longer term perspective, if the 30 day rolls into the 60 day and the 60 day becomes the 90 day and suddenly you're talking about all four of them rolling over, you'll start getting red signals and that goes, well, now it's starting to feel a little bit more like a nasty correction. It's starting to look a little bit angrier. Maybe this is actually a global top rather than a local top. So anyway, again, as with all indicators, there's going to be different tools and ways you can actually assess these things. But generally speaking, looking at things in terms of how vertical the market is relative to not zero, but the realized price, the true capital inflows, in my view, um, just provides a nice way to kind of conceptualize things in terms of the fundamentals, but also looking at terms things, things, um, things in terms of price. Because price going vertical in both directions, by the way, this thing works on the, on the other side. If you've got these really negative prints, it's going to look scary as anything. But if you compare that scary as anything to the true capital inflows or outflows, it just helps ground it a little bit closer towards what's really going on. Is that upcycle really supported by the, the capital inflows? If so, probably be a little bit less scared. If it's terrifying um, and you're seeing capital outflows, then this indicator is going to be red as anything. And it'll, it'll, it'll tell you so. So that's the general framework. Um, it's, you know, again, it's something that uh, kind of came from that original idea. Um, I know there's a lot of content there and we will build up more and more charts and metrics and tools and videos to explain these. But uh, please do let me know if you have any questions or comments at all. Um, if you do find this useful or not, let me know about the more the, the fundamental type content. Uh, more than happy to take that feedback and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, cheers. <laughs>